Okay, if we see the numbers 3 divided by 3, we know that 3 divided by 3 is 1. What are we really doing here? Well, we're reducing our fraction, that 3 divided by 3 is 1, and 3 divided by 3, again, on the bottom is 1. So we get 1 divided by 1, which is 1. By the same mechanism, then, A divided by A, well, anything divided by itself is going to give us the answer 1. What do we get, then, if we have 3A divided by 2A? Well, A divided by A is going to give us 1, so we're actually going to get 3 divided by 2, which is going to be 1 and a half. So the answer of 3A divided by 2A is going to be 1 and a half. The answer of 12AB divided by 3A. Well, 3 goes into 12 four times, and A divided by A cancels out, because anything divided by itself is 1. So the answer that we would get here would be 4B. So I have A plus A plus A plus A plus A plus A up here divided by A plus A on the bottom. Well, if I've got six lots of A up there, then I have six times A on the top divided by two times A on the bottom. A divided by A, anything divided by itself, gives us the answer 1. So we get the answer as 6 divided by 2, which is 3. This is particularly useful if we've got some like really strange numbers here. 1.99 plus 1.99 plus 1.99 plus 1.99 divided by 1.99 plus 1.99. What we get here is we get four lots of 1.99 on the top and two lots of 1.99 on the bottom. But here we have the same number, 1.99 divided by itself will give us the answer 1, so it cancels. So we get that these numbers all added together end up being 4 divided by 2, which gives us the answer 2. We also have a few different square, uh, rectangles here where we know that the area of the rectangle is 12x squared. And we know that one of the sides is 3x, and we need to know what the other side is. Well, that means that we've got 3x multiplied by something equals 12x squared. How can we work out what this something is? Well, we could do that by dividing both sides of our equation by 3x. If we do that, we get 3x over 3x, which gives us 1. So we get that our something is going to be 12x squared divided by 3x. 12x squared is the same as 12 times x times x divided by 3x. So we can see that one of the x's divided by the other x cancels, because x divided by x is itself, is 1. And 12 divided by 3 is 4. So that the answer to 12x divided by th x squared divided by 3x is 4x. So that must mean that our other length here must be 4x. And then we can do a little check. Does 4x multiplied by 3x equal 12x squared, which is the area? Well, 4 times 3 get equals 12, and x times x equals x squared. So it does give us that particular um, area of 12x squared. Let's try it one more time. We have an area of 48xy. And we know that one of the sides is 6y. And the other one we don't know. But we do know that the length times the breadth, so 6y multiplied by the question mark, equals... 48xy. Well, we divide both of our sides of the equation by 6y to get rid of the 6y on the left-hand side of the equal sign. That gives us that our question mark, 6y divided by 6y gives us 1, equals 48 divided by 6 is 8, and the y divided by the y cancels. 
So the answer ends up being 8x. So I think that the question mark here should be 8x. Let's go back and do a little check. If we've done everything right, we can multiply the length times the breadth, which we think is 8x times 6y. 8 6s are 48. x multiplied by y is xy. So the area would be 48xy, which is the area we had here in the question. So we've done it right.